Um, growing, growing up, I thought this was a bed bug. People around who told me this is a bed bug. Until I did some research and I learned that this was vitiligo from some model that, it, that is the same skin condition as me. So I'd like to understand what is vitiligo. Hey guys, hi. Welcome to another episode of the third space. This is Phil. I'm Alex. And I'm pretty sure you guys have me seeing these handsome faces on your screen. But the boys are back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. And as you saw today, we're gonna discuss vitiligo. vitiligo. <laughs> <laughs> Got it! <laughs> Did you get it? I don't know. What is vitiligo? Well, let's begin with its basic definition. Vitiligo is a condition in which areas of the skin lose their normal color. As a result, the individual has these patchy areas of skin that have a lighter tone than the surrounding skin. You see, everybody's unique in that we, have, we all have different kinds of skin tones. Um, and this is because of a pigment called melanin, which is found in our skin, hair and eyes, uh, both for animal and people alike. Where is melanin produced? Well, melanin is produced by very special cells um, called melanocytes. Uh, melanocytes produces this dark brown pigment, um, therefore people with more mel uh, melanin have uh, more melanocytes and therefore have a darker skin color as compared to those with less. This is basically the basic definition of why we have uh, different races of people. Right, so people with vitiligo therefore have these melanocytes either being destroyed or not functioning in some areas of the skin compared to others. The exact mechanism by which they stop functioning or are being destroyed is currently not well understood. That's just another way of saying we actually don't know. But the most uh, accepted um, theory is the theory of the autoimmunity. So an autoimmune disease uh, in medicine is basically where your body produces cells that attack, um, antibodies that attack your uh, body cells and therefore you have a diseased state. Yep. The current assumption is that people with these autoimmune traits are currently at a higher risk of having vitiligo than others. Also, if there's a family history of somebody having vitiligo, chances are the risk are higher for whoever they have as a child to have vitiligo as well. Well, there's so many other more theories, but we're not going to get uh, into that uh, in this specific video. Yeah, I know. Now, here's a fun fact. There's actually two types of vitiligo. The first one is known as non-segmental vitiligo. It's actually the most common type. The person who has this develops the white patches all over the body. They begin at the arm, over the mouth, and even around the eyes. Sometimes they can occur where skin folds against itself, like in your armpits. Now, the patches begin small, and then they become larger as the person grows over time. Right, that's right. Um, the second type of vitiligo is called segmental vitiligo. Uh, it has its onset earlier on in life, during childhood, and then um, it grows to a certain extent, after which it arrests in growth. Um, this is found on only one side of the body, so it's unilateral, such as only one side of the arm or the hand, as uh, in contrary to um, non-segmental vitiligo, which is generalized all over the body. Exactly. Now think back to Vernon's video. What kind of vitiligo do you think he has? Give us your answer and type it in the comment section below. Now, we just like to highlight and clarify that um, vitiligo should not be confused with albinism because although both conditions share a problem with the melanin, albinism has actually been extensively studied and the mechanism by which it occurs is actually well understood. That's true. They're not the same thing at all. Now, you see, the reason people with albinism don't have melanin is not because the melanocytes are being destroyed, but rather because there's a defective metabolic pathway in the way in which the melanin is produced. And that has to do with a molecule known as tyrosine, but that gets way too complex for the purpose of this video, so we're going to skip it for now. There are a lot more myths and misconceptions about vitiligo. Let's go over a few. For example, some people believe that if you drink a lot of milk, you will have that's not true. Please drink your milk, it's good for your bones. Another myth is that vitiligo can be spread by a direct contact with the skin. That is also not true. In that you'll just be making somebody feel insecure about something they're probably most likely to be self-conscious about. Exactly. Some people think exposure to sunlight may cause vitiligo. That is also not true. On the contrary, UV rays from the sun actually darken skin color, which is why you get a skin tan if you go tanning on the beach. Vitiligo can be treated. Specific realistic treatment outcomes need to be discussed with your doctor, specifically a dermatologist. This is a doctor who specializes in treating skin conditions. That's right. So dermatologists can offer you treatment options that may include the usage of steroid creams, phototherapy, laser therapy, and sometimes even surgery. Now, while undergoing treatment for vitiligo, it's important to remember that it will not, it will not yield immediate results. So patience is needed on your side. 
As you would have figured by now, there's plenty of other skin conditions out there. Vitiligo is just one of them. People with vitiligo are as normal as you and I. So don't be rude and don't stare too long. In fact, flaunt your knowledge. We just taught you about vitiligo after all. So, that is it on vitiligo. Now you know what it is, who it affects, and how to treat it. We hope you learned something new today. My name is Philemon. I'm Alex. And, and this, this is, is The, the Third Space. space.